Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, I'll be doing November 2021 question paper, physical sciences, sorry, mathematics paper one. And this is the equations mostly. So solve for x. So the first one is the one that we have here. So they are saying solve for x. Okay, so I'll solve this, these, uh, what is it? Quadratic equations. So let's go. So here's the first one. They're saying solve for x. So first step to these ones, you factorize it. Bracket, bracket, counter zero. Right? When it is on a standard form. So standard form is this a, a x squared plus b, x plus c is equal to zero. That is standard form. Then you factorize it, right? So what are the factors of x? Says so x and x. What are the factors of 24? And say 6 and 4, right? So cross multiply this times this 6x, this time this is 4x. So the bigger cross multiplication take the sign of the middle term. So this is 6x, so this will have a positive sign, which is that, so a negative sign, which is the sign of the middle term, and this one will be positive. So this times this minus 6x, this times this is positive 4x. If you add them, they give you minus 2x. So minus 2x is our middle term there. This times this. x times x give you x squared. 6 times, minus 6 times 4 give you minus, minus 24. These are your factors. So you have your x here and your x here. Right? Take them as they are. Plus 4. So now, we have two brackets multiplying each other. So if you have two terms multiplying each other, say x times y is equal to zero, what this tells you, one of them, at least one of them should be zero. It's either x is equal to zero or your y is equal to zero. At least one of them should be zero. If you have two terms multiplying each other, the answer is zero. Then one of them should be zero. So now we have two brackets multiplying each other and the answer is zero. Then at least one of these brackets should be zero. That's what this tells you. So what do you do? You say, I don't know which one is zero, but one of them. So you will say, okay, your x minus six, which is the first bracket, is equal to zero, or your x plus four, which is the second bracket, is equal to zero. Therefore, your x is equal to six, or your x is equal to minus four. So the solutions, these, these are the solutions. So you can say x is an element of, 6 and minus 4. This is the solution for 1.1.1. Let's go to the second one. The second one says, so it's 1.1.2. This is the second one. We're done with this one. So you have 2x squared minus 3x minus 3 is equal to 0. Right? So, um, that's in solve for x, and the note next to this equation, they said correct to two decimal places. So that correct to two decimal places, I'll say some sort of a hint that whatever your solutions of x will be, they won't be beautiful as these integers that we have there. It might be rational numbers. Of course, these are also rational numbers. Um, it might be some sort of irrational numbers or maybe not so nice rational numbers, the ones maybe that are in fraction. So now, to avoid having all that difficulty, let's just use quadratic equation to solve this one. So you know the quadratic equation, this gives us the x values of a quadratic equation. x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then, you go to ask yourself, what is your A, what is your B, and what is your C? A is the coefficient of x squared. Here is x squared. This coefficient is 2. So your A is equal to 2. And B is your coefficient of x. Here is your x. The coefficient of x is minus 3. And C is the constant, which is minus 3, which is that. And then you substitute all these values on this equation of yours to find 
the x values that you were, you were asked to find in the first place. So I'm going to clean this part. So, what do you say? You say, okay, x is equal to negative b. Negative b, what is your b? It's 3 minus 3 plus or minus the square root of what? Of b squared. What is b? So b was minus 3 or squared. Minus 4a. What is your a? Your a is 2. Times c, and our c is minus 3. All over 2a. What is our a? Our a is 2. So, um, simplify this. So, your x is equal to um, 3, because this term is 3, plus or minus. You punch this root under, or on your calculator. All of it. So, you punch square root of minus 3 all squared to minus 4ac. Under the square root as it is. Square root minus 3 all squared. Minus 4 times 2 times minus 3. So we have square root of 33 here. All over 4. Right? So what do you have? So you say your x is equal to 3 plus square root of 33 over 4 or x is equal to 3 minus square root of 33 over 4. So this, is, this part is the first one with the plus, the other part is part with the minus. So you just pass this on your calculator and see what will your answer be. So it's 3 plus square root of 33 over 4. And your answer is 2 go. Your, your x is equal to 2.19. Right? And the other one. 3 minus square root of 33. X is equal to minus 0 0.69. Therefore, these are your solutions. So X is an element of this set. 2.19 and negative 0 0.69. We're done with 1.1.2. Now we'll go to 1.1.3. I'll clean this. Hopefully it is clear. And then we'll go to the next one. If you're not able or if you're not clear, you can pause it or rewind it even. If you're not done looking at these solutions. I'm going to clean them now. So we'll go to 1.1.3. 1.1.3. So 1.1.3 you have x squared plus 5x is less or equal to minus 4. So same question. They wanted to solve this x on this quadratic inequality. So what do you do? Transpose the 4 to the other side. So you have x squared plus 5x plus 4 is less or equal to 0. So, once you have this in this form, and you have zero on the other side, you find your critical values, right? So, to find your critical values, you say, okay, I'm, I want to find intercepts of this part. So, you say, x squared plus 5x plus 4 is equal to zero. What do you do? You factorize this. So you factorize this. What are the factors of x? Is x and x. What are the factors of 2? Of 4? Is 2 and 2? Then um, you have plus and plus. So this time this is x squared. This time this is 4. This time this is 2x. This time that is 2x. So when you add these, they give you 4x. But they should give you 5x. What are other values of 5 or 4? It's 1 and 4. So you can put 1 here and put 4 there. And see what will happen this time. 
in this x times x x times x is x squared x times 1 is 4 then you do the cross multiplication thing x times 1 is x this times this is 4x so add this 2 is 5x so these are the factors of that equation of this one so you have x plus 1 and your x plus 4 equal to 0 so uh, then you know from the 1.1.1 if you have two brackets multiplying each other at least one of them is 0 so x plus 1 it was 0 or your x plus 4 is 0 right so your x is equal to minus 1 or your x is equal to uh, minus 4 and then you draw a rough sketch of this graph or function which is the parabola rough sketch up will be something like this right so your x is equal to 0 oh sorry your y is equal to 0 and your x is equal to 0 here right so it's something like this so you have your minus 1 and you have minus 4 here so once you have this drawn um, once you have this drawn you look at your last equation before you found your critical values so i'm going to look here before i found the critical value i want it where it is less or equal to zero where is this graph of mine less or equal to zero it is less or equal to zero it is here because it is negative here right my function is less or equal to zero here because it is negative there then what are the corresponding x values where it is less or equal to zero is these values here from here to here these are the x values here so your x your x values should be greater or equal to minus 4 or less or equal to 1 or simply you can say x should be in this closed interval here minus 4 to minus 1 these should be your solutions then you will get this which is also that and we're done with this one. So we we'll go to 1.1.4. So they want you to solve for x here as well. So you have x plus 28 is equal to 2 minus x. What do you do? First step, just square both sides here to remove the square root. So here you are left with x plus 28 is equal to 4 minus 4x plus x squared, right? 0 is equal to x squared minus 4x minus x minus 4 minus 28 actually it's plus 4 here because this so x squared minus 4x which is that minus x which is that minus 28 and then this 4 is positive so we simplify say okay 0 is equal to x squared minus 5x minus 24 is equal to 0. Then, what are the factors of 24? Right? So, um, you do the same method as we did before. We find that 0 is equal to these brackets here. You have your x, you have your x, you have your 8, you have your 3, right? Then you have um, minus, you have plus. So your x is equal to 8, or your x is equal to minus 3. Right? And then you test these values on your original equation, which the original equation was square root of x plus 28 is equal to 2 minus x. So you substitute them here. But just by looking at this, you see 8 will not work because. This will always be positive, but once you substitute 8 here, we'll have minus 6. Seems like this one is failing from the launch pad. Right? But if you substitute 3, minus 3 here, you get this will be 25, which is the square root of what? Of 25 is 5. And then if you substitute 3 here, so this is your solution. And 
that one is not working. So we're done with 1.1.4. We go to 1.2, which is solving simultaneous equations. I hope this one is clear and straightforward. Now 1.2. So 2y is equal to 3 plus x, 2xy plus 7 is equal to x squared plus 4y squared. So 1.2, solve simultaneously for x and y in the equations here. So they want you to solve for x and y on this equation here. Okay, so... What do you do? So you always go to, I always advise students to go to the simpler equation, which is this one, and solve for x or solve for y. Oh, actually, I won't solve for x. So let's solve for x on this equation. So when you're solving for x on that equation, here is what we will do. We'll say, okay, we'll solve for x on the first equation, and this one, our second equation. So we'll solve for x there. So our x will have 2y transpose 3 to the side minus 3 is equal to x. Once you have this x, you substitute your x on this equation here. Here and there. When you see x, you put this thing because your x is called this. So you have 2y times x to 2 minus 3. 2y minus 3. This is your x now. Plus 7 is equal to x squared, which is 2y minus 3 y squared plus 4y squared. Then you solve for y here. Simplify now. So this time this is 4y squared. This time that minus 2y times 3 minus 6y plus 7 is equal to uh, you simplify this you simplify it, some becomes like 4y squared, so minus 12y plus 9 plus 4y squared. Right? So, simplify. This side is happy, is okay, right? So you say, okay, uh, 4y squared. Actually, what you can say, you can, this and that go away. Right? Then what are you left with? You're left with um, uh, 0 is equal to 4y squared, which is this, minus 12y, plus this 6y here. Because you're transposing this to the other side, this transposing them to that side, plus 9. Uh, Minus 7, I think. So you have 0 is equal to 4y squared. Then you add these two. So when you add these two, what do you get? You get minus 6y plus, uh, uh, plus 2. Right? Then you try to factorize it. So 0. As you call it, you open in brackets. What are the factors of 4? My factors of 4 is maybe 2 and 2. And what are my factors of this one here? It's 2 and 1. So I can say 2 and 1. So 2x, oh sorry, so it's 2y, 2y. Then this one will be negative and this one will be negative. This time this 4y squared. This time this is positive 2. Then this time this minus 2y minus 4y. So this is minus 6y. So these are the factors. So we have 2y minus 2 and 2y minus 1. Right? 
So, same situation. You multiply in two brackets and the answer is zero. So one of the brackets should be zero. Or one of the brackets is zero. So what do you say? You say, okay, 2y minus 2 is equal to zero. Or 2y minus 1 minus 1 is equal to zero. So that tells you the 2y is equal to 2. Therefore, the y is equal to 1. Or the 2y is equal to 1. Therefore, your y should be half. So it looks like, right? What do you say now? Now that you have your y values, you can find your x values, right? So if y is 1, in this case, you have your x to be 2 times 1 minus 3 is equal to minus 1. So you have the coordinates there as minus 1 and 1. And the second one, if y is equal to half, you have your x to be 2 times half minus 3. So this is equal to minus 2. So your coordinates are minus 2 and half. Then we're done with this question. 1.2. Now we'll go to 1.3. So this one is going to be challenging. So let's go to 1.3. I'm going to clean the board and uh, I'm going to clean the board and try to answer this question. Let's go. 1.3 reads as follows. The roots of an equation are, so they're given the solutions to some equation to be this, right? where your m, n, and p are positive real numbers and the numbers m, n, and p form the geometric sequence, right? They are saying now, prove that x is a non-real number. So they wanted to prove that this solution is not a real number. That's what these people wanted to prove. Okay. Let me read this again. 1.3. The roots of the equation are x is equal to this. So these are the roots of some equation or solutions of some equations. Where your m, n, and p are positive real numbers and your m, n, and p in this order, they form a geometric sequence, right? So they are asking you to prove that this is a non-real number. So prove x, which is this solution, prove the solution x is a non-real number. So, they want you to prove that x, this solution is a non-real number. So, in your context, you know that from the solution, uh, from the nature of roots topics, that for this, for a solution to be a non-real number, the discriminant needs to be less than zero. So, if non-real number, real number, in, in the greater context, means, implies that your discriminant is less than zero. So, our job here to answer this question, to show that this solution is non-real solution, we must show That the discriminant, which is called b squared minus 4ac, is less than zero. That's what we should do. Once we show that the discriminant is less than zero, then we have shown that this thing is less than zero. We have shown that the solution is, non, is a non real number. So, what do we do? We say, okay, what is our discriminant? Discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac, and it's this part here under the square root. So which means our discriminant is n squared d minus 4mp. This is our discriminant, right? We have our discriminant doing that. We must show that this part is less than zero. What else are we told or given? We are told that these three guys in this order form a geometric sequence, right? Which means 
we know from each matrix sequence that uh, the ratio, the common ratio on each matrix sequence is equal to T2 divided by T1, which is equal to T3 divided by T2. So our ratio here is equal to T2. Our T2 is N. It's N over M, which is equal to T3 over T2, which is P over N. P over N. This is our ratio, right? Our common ratio. What this tells us, we can cross multiply this and find that n squared is equal to mp. So you have your m, n squared is equal to mp. We have your mp is equal to n squared. So what you can do, you can substitute your mp here. Right? So you can say our discriminant is equal to n squared minus mp for mp. Then n squared minus 4 mp. mp is called n squared, which means here we have n squared here. Which means now we have n squared minus 4 n squared. And this is equal to uh, negative 3 n squared. So this part, the n squared part, will always be positive. Since it will always be positive, you are multiplying this positive part by a negative number. Right? So what this tells you is that the entire thing will always be less than zero because if this part, the n, the n squared is always positive, because you know n squared is greater than equal to zero, right? Actually, we were told that these are positive real numbers. We know n is greater than zero. So the square of n will always be positive. Multiplying it by a negative number, we'll keep it negative the entire time. Therefore, um, um, the discriminant will be less than uh, zero for all uh, oh, for the discriminant will be less than zero, right? For uh, M and P, which are positive real numbers. So we have shown that the solution will be unreal because the discriminant will be negative the entire time. So, the solution of roots of the equation will be non-real. So, we have answered this question. Yeah, because the aim or the goal was to show that this discriminant is always negative. If the discriminant is always negative, then this part will always be negative here. So this part is always negative. Then, which means the solution is non-real because now you won't have a real number then. You'll have some sort of a complex number. So I think we're done with this question. We're done with this question at all. So yeah, thank you for watching.